Every morning when I read a scripture passage and a meditation from this book, Magnificat, I usually hear a message that I need to. Um, it seems to always pertain to my life. But this morning I, I read this from the Gospel of Luke. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold it. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Now that's sort of the opposite of what I'm trying to do in terms of my boundaries. When I was in the partial hospitalization plan at, at Laurel Hospital, the psychiatric program, we did an exercise that was interesting on boundaries that I've remembered in my boundary work. We applied pressure on, we put somebody in the center of the room and she was sitting in a chair and each person came and applied pressure on a certain part of that person as she said something like, take care of my kids today, or cook my meal today, or I'm not going to listen to what you have to say on this matter. Something that was a boundary issue for us, something that gave us weight that we needed to lift off. The person would say it as he or she was pressing down. And it was very effective to see that pressure from those different places in such a physical way. I like to think of boundaries as a screen. This has a screen to keep out all the mosquitoes and the bees and the birds from coming in and being a nuisance or even building a nest within your room. This is the window without a boundary and it, everything can come in. So you're saying to yourself, that's all well and good. I understand boundary screen. I understand the pressure. But give me a real life situation. How does this really apply in my life? I think yesterday was a good example of how boundaries work or how I'm trying to uh, learn to erect them. I was swinging Catherine and a little boy came up at the park and tapped me on the shoulder and said, can I swing? Can you, can she get off? Can I swing? I, I want to swing. Now, the people pleasing Therese of last year would have said, of course, Catherine, hop off the swing. But I paused and I said, um, we just got here and you can use the swing in a little bit. Well, he waited and, and somebody got off the swing um, next to us. And he sat there and he was a big kid. I'm like 60 pounds or so. And he said, can you push me? And <laughs> the old people pleasing Therese would have never hesitated, just started pushing him and Catherine along. But I'm starting to look at all those little favors that I do throughout the day and how they steal my energy so that I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm not there for my kids. And right now I need to be there for Catherine because she's having a lot of anxiety over her eyes, her vision. Um, it's a long story, but but I, I said to the little boy, um, you know what, no, uh, you can ask your mom to push you, but I need to push my little girl right now. And <laughs> I know this seems small and you're thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of a rude thing to do, you know, not help, to help out a little boy. And I still, part of me feels like that's not the Christian thing to do until I get home and I realize how much more energy I have for my kids and that I'm a much better parent when I can just exercise boundaries like that all the time whether they're requests that come in via email helping to get published or um, taking care of somebody's kids or help with a, um, an article all those little things like the guy on the swing add up and they, they steal my energy. And if I can keep that screen in, if I can just let the things that don't deplete me in, then I'm going to be so much healthier and happier.
in the long run. So that's my sermon today on boundaries. And uh, I guess I would disagree with the Gospel of Luke. 